so hello all my name is Peter uh, Schindler I am from Czech Republic from the Red Hat's desktop QE team and I'd like to show you how we test desktop applications how we test GNOME and how we use Doctel and behave for that purpose so desktop QE uh, it's sm quite small internal team uh, we do some automation also some manual testing uh, uh, it's not long time ago when we decided to start with upstream our test and it's like my work and I'd like to continue with what I just uh, begun uh, you can look in a Peugeot there is a group desktop QA but right now there, there is just uh, uh, one uh, one test that or tests for GNOME calculator and I hope that other will show up soon and it would be great if there would be some community when there will be tests or if there will be someone who would like to te write some tests that would be the best uh, we focus on uh, testing of applications on different uh, desktop environments like GNOME and KDE but mainly GNOME uh, we also test office applications like LibreOffice and few others uh, then we test uh, some other components which are desktop related like some console apps for example uh, view and libraries for example it's like GNOME Keyring and also we test hardware which probably won't be uh, upstreamed because I don't think that Red Hat will uh, give community a lot of hardware just like that but uh, community can help us with testing on their own hardware so that's, that's where the strength of the community a lot of hardware so does someone know behave or met him before no if no uh, you can find uh, some documentation on this, this link I'm not sure if you can read it properly it's quite dark and but if you will look for behave and Python on the Google it will show you probably this page and there you can find a lot of information about what is it how it uh, could be used what's the philosophy behind it and uh, as it, it is written there its uh, purpose is behavior driven development which means that you define what you want your program uh, to work like like you click some button and you expect uh, to sh show hello world text somewhere and then you will program test for it which will test if it all uh, really happens and then you will write the code and something like that we don't use it like that <laughs> we just want to use behave for writing our tests for those application which already exists and uh, developers quite probably doesn't care about uh, develop behavior and develop driven development so we just use it for creating a test cases or test plans and write them in behave uh, the good thing about it and the advantage of behave is that you can read the code and understand what's happening there so I will show you some tests and it looks like this so you can see that there is some feature this is test case for GNOME calculator you can find on, on the Peugeot, Pe Peugeot. Uh, 
Mm. Shit. You can probably read it, right? I'm not sure if this can like I will open it and get it. Wait a moment. So you can see that there is something like feature advanced mode, which is GNOME calculators mode. So uh, we have some feature and we have some scenarios we want to test. That could be a particular test case and that's the test plan, maybe. Uh, in every scenario, which is one test case and one run, you can define some steps. For example, this is not a good example because it's a lot of test cases in one. For example, this one or this one. <laughs> it's It has name which is useful when you run a lot of tests. You can see which one is this one in uh, the output, which I will show later. And then you have some steps which you want to do and you want to check some output. So you can see that calculate tan p uh, divided by 2. It's like you can you know what it's wanted here. And then there is a step called then, which assumes that something happened, and you just checked if what happens is right, and you just are looking for some error, and that's that's it. It's like you would some uh, say to someone how he should test this feature. Uh, it has some advantages, like when you have to put it through. Uh, deeper testing can use more values. You can write something like scenario outline and use uh, variables and write the table. And it will run for each line in the table, it will run all those tests. So it will click different button, calculate different value and expects the different result. So you don't have to write this like 10 times, just once. So that's how it looks like. Uh, also you can have you can have something like background, which means that when you run scenario you want to do some preparation to s some values so right here you want to set number format to be fixed and so uh, so you don't have to write it to every uh, test case you just write it here that you want to set the state of the application to this one and then run the test case or the scenario as it is called in the behave So, the another advantage of that is that you have reusable steps. So, uh, if you use the same steps, you will program it just once, and you can use it in more uh, more test cases or scenarios. And also, another advantage is it has nice outputs, which I have open right. Here, I'm not sure if it's big enough to s so you could see. Can you read it? At least somehow. Yeah, that's uh, when I run the whole feature. Uh, I told Behave to create a HTML, HTML output and it created something like this. It says which scenario was r run its first line in that table and those uh, particular steps and if it's green then it's okay if it's not then it's broken like and it's in uh, red so you can check what happened so you can see okay th this is this should be p that's the only problem with this HTML uh, output that 
some Unicode signs are shown wrongly like this. So, but if you know the test case or the scenario, you can guess what's what it should be. And you can see that it tried to uh, somehow uh, compute the sin uh, sinus, and the result was wrong. But you can also look what was the error message. Just it says that the result was different than expected. You can also look on the screenshot. Hey, it really was different than expected. Yeah, it's uh, this is the mm, error in the test case itself. So uh, there should be just one p. Uh, it was, I think, typo because it happened more times. So, but uh, that's something you have to fix if you find this. Uh, if you find something isn't working properly, then it could be bug in the. Uh, feature on uh, in the application we are testing, or it could and probably is <laughs> uh, bug in your uh, test, which this one was. And you can also see the video in calculator. It doesn't make sense, but there are a lot. But there are some features uh, which it's uh, where it's really helpful to see what happened, like. Not sure it's not here, but for example, it was trying to click on currency button and then it didn't do nothing. So you can see it here that it really didn't do nothing. So, and if you, uh, so you can see what happens here. Uh, you can do this with behaves, which is quite nice and helps to solve the bugs. Excuse me? Uh, screenshot uh, when the moment of the failure. Yeah. It takes screenshots whenever. I think whenever uh, the step begins and ends, or something like that, and if something happens, then it will propagate it to the HTML. I think. Uh, no passwords won't be. S uh, if you will click on button to show password, then yes. Uh, but uh, if you are writing passwords in those tests, ah, pass no. You can program it to show uh, screenshots and videos also and pa on in the past. It's just uh, uh, written like this because when you do a lot of testing, there would be a lot of videos and uh, HTML would be really big. So it's saving space to, yeah. But you can uh, program it uh, in, yeah, I will, I will show you where it is. I'm not sure if I will find directly the uh, the code of doing the screenshots, but uh, I will show you uh, where you can look for it, and it can be programmed to create a different uh, output. So you can, for example, make a screenshot when uh, in every step or when it's passing or something like that. So that was to behave. Uh, I did that. <laughs> so and Docktail. Docktail is Python library and utilities, which are used to automation for automation, and it's paid on Etspy, which is toolkit which gives you the ability to click or to call like to uh, do a user input like clicking writing text 
and also to gather information like position of some uh, of some parts of the screen or of, of some parts of the application like uh, you want to know where the button you want to click on is and that's done with uh, Doctail. So uh, when you want to write the test you will write uh, the behave test case and you then have to program the particular steps and it's done with Doctail. Uh, it gives you some API to execute those things to uh, search the UI tree of the application uh, for uh, those buttons and uh, text inputs areas and so. Uh, sadly, right now it doesn't work with Wayland and I'm not sure and nobody is if it will ever work with Wayland because uh, you can find UI uh, tree and search it. You can uh, find where the button is in the application but not on the screen hole. So that's one problem and second problem is you can do the user actions like typing and clicking which is quite bad for this type of uh, testing so right now we have to use uh, xorg still while it is still present in Fedora uh, so yeah that's the problem you have to set uh, uh, custom.conf uh, of GDM to don't use uh, Wayland in the session and then it works. So you can still test uh, the functionality of the application but you won't be probably able to catch all the crashes due to wrong uh, uh, due to matter problems or Wayland or whatever. So, I heard that um, the Wayland, uh, sorry, um, the Docker mm -hmm. developers are still working on. Does it can work in Wayland? Is there any, is there any problem? Uh, they can work it, work on it because it depends on the uh, on the sorry accessibility, and it accessibility doesn't work on uh, properly on Wayland, and Doctail won't be able to uh, to work properly on Wayland until the accessibility will work, and it will probably never happen, or not, because it's quite uh, difficult to change uh, change the way Wayland works because the security reasons it doesn't work for it doesn't work in case it's directly in deeply written in Wayland so it's it will be really hard to change it somehow and it would took a lot of work probably and it would probably could create some uh, security uh, security errors or something like so it's maybe it's not a good idea to solve it but we'll see we are trying to mm, make developers to change it and to make it somehow run at least for example in some uh, some like testing mode of of matter or something so how to define the steps uh behave use decorators which will make uh, which will match the steps i will show the code and I will show you <laughs> I will have to open it in open it here yep so for example to calculate maybe step so you have the uh, decorator step which will say that the step looks like uh, calculate and some variable 
which is defined here and you define the function which gets context uh, variable which uh, provides behave provides the context variable where are the various information for example uh, what feature is run what step is run what scenario uh, there is uh, you can run uh, with context you can run another step from the code so you can just if you have step which do something you need to do in this step you can reuse that step and run it from this and it also can be filled with uh, with information you need for your testing so for example we use it for uh, saving the instance of application like uh, what we find in the UI tree uh, we can save it to the context and it's visible in all steps in this context and also you have to have a variable which has the same name as in the creator and you can you will get what uh, behave has in its test case there so uh, you then do some typing and the magic you want to know uh, you want to do with on uh, an on the session like click buttons and everything you need and you use docktail for that and it's written in python but i <laughs> forgot to mention it that it's whole in the python <laughs> uh so for example here you can see this app, app instance is instance of the application which is uh, which is tested right here so it's gnome calculator and you want to find in ui3 the children of the whole application which have some properties like this child have uh, those as name result and is showing right now so it will find uh, the uh, UI for example for example button which is named uh, result and it will r returns it and then you can click on it uh, for playing with this the idle thing is to play with uh, IPython so I will I will if we have time yeah we have a lot of time so I will show you how to play with uh, those tests or with Doctail uh, later so and also uh, if you define the then statements or then steps you can for example use assert to check if uh, those uh, results are what you expect for example here uh, it was the one I showed you in the example of behave it expects some error message so you will check if that message is what you expect you will get the actual message you will find the right child which is sometimes quite uh, it's not straightforward because sometimes those uh, those items aren't directly named or something they are just somewhere in the tree so we will have to s find some item which is near in the tree and from the parent for example go to another uh, to branch of the tree but uh, yeah it's I, I will show you how to f find out where you can find it and uh, when this is needed it happens sometimes because uh, developers mostly don't write their UI uh, to be really uh, tested like this but uh, mostly you want some items which have names like buttons or have some text 
in it so it can be found like quite easily uh, also there is a uh, one file which is quite important which is named environment.py where are uh, defined uh, special steps I would say uh, or special functions is before all, before scenario, after a step and so and it says that for example before scenario is uh, run whenever it is before uh, uh, the scenario itself is run so for example you want to run some scenario for testing if it calculates sinus of p correctly so you run the scenario but before just before that you want to set up the context uh, to have the right application it's here is uh, as i said that you can save uh, some information useful information to context it's it could be done for example here so we just create the application instance uh, which will show to the tree to the which will give the tree of the GNOME calculator the UI tree of the GNOME calculator you can also put there um, more parameters like record video and a lot of others for example if the desktop file is named uh, unusually then you can put it here so uh, the the steps which uh, need to have a uh, des uh, desktop file and use it uh, use them have a right desktop file or a right name so you can do a lot of stuff here uh we have some common common steps and a common uh common yeah common steps uh which are commonly used uh, between all the project we have right now there is uh, only one project which is uh, upstream but we have uh, quite a lot uh, tests for a lot of applications so uh, for example I steps like run this application is used in every every test almost every test so it has and it does have sense to uh, have it on some one place so uh, every every project uh, don't have to have this in its own project so it makes shorter code okay uh, so let's look on the UI tree I'm not sure if on this uh, <laughs> on this monitor or on, on this screen it will be visible S but hopefully yes I will run it on my session so there is application which comes with uh, ETSP it's called sniff and it shows the UI trees of running applications for example if I run calculator I have to oh, sorry. refresh then I will hopefully find the calculator here and there is a UI tree this is what you have in the context.app you have this tree so it's the same as uh, you can see in the Python uh, Python Doctail and it has quite nice mm, feature which is highlight items I'm not sure if it's visible or not. it's highlight items and it do the thing you would guess if you click on some item it will highlight it if it's visible then it will highlight directly directly where it is if it's not visible it just blinks somewhere else so if I click on this item I know that it's the main part of the calculator so I can open it and investigate further I want some buttons 
so let me see okay buttons here you can see that those the, those, uh, those trees are quite simple but still the main thing you need is for example to find a particular button so yeah I found button for factorial and it's called factorial great so uh, now when I want to click on the but factorial I know that I am looking for children which uh, have the name property set to factorial if I want to specify further because there is written factorial somewhere else or there are two items with name factorial or something I can specify that role name is push, but push button and I can do uh, this stuff with a lot of things with ev everything which is here so I can investigate uh, like this what I'm looking for and then I can use it in Python ideally I would now not sure it won't probably work right now um. Ah, okay that's another session <laughs> so you can can you see it So uh, there is one main thing you want to <laughs> import from Doctail. It's from Doctail tree. It's root, which is really the root of this tree. And then, if you want some particular application, you just write uh, root application and the name of the application. Okay, and then we have a root of the application GNOME Calculator, so we can play with it. Uh, you can find, for example, the. I hopefully will find it properly. So I found just find the, the button I wanted to f I was looking for before and if I mm -hmm, if I just try to click on it we'll see what it will do will it do Dot click and it clicked on it so I am magic <laughs> and I didn't know that I have xorg I thought that I have Valen so yeah <laughs> that's good a uh, good way to uh, realize that you have xorg session and not Valen <laughs> because I totally forgot to uh, change it <laughs> So yeah, uh, you can play with uh, IPython and Docte like this. So this is how I mostly uh, write tests or mostly uh, fix tests because from time to time developers uh, 
decide that it's time to change the tree and then your tests are quite uh, screwed and you have to rewrite it which doesn't happen a lot a lot and that's the main advantage of this uh, uh, this way to test ap uh, UI applications so yeah but for example uh, it happens to calculator quite uh, in some time uh, so uh, every, bu every button was renamed but fortunately it was renamed to what it's written on those buttons because for example f for example button lock I don't know uh, button sin wasn't uh, was named sinus like the whole name of the function and now it's uh, uh, its name is just sin like what's written on the button so you don't have to guess it you just write for example capital and and you know that it will find the proper button but you have to change it if it happens sometimes also when uh, developers want to try new stuff like new I GUI uh, fancy stuff like buttons like something like this or you have to then change everything or this is a really great way to store stuff in variables like <laughs> So you have from time to time you have to rewrite the test also. So, so you have to go for to the sniff or play with IPython and, and find the proper way to do what you wanna do, and to write the step. So you can also hi highlight uh, in IPython its uh, function blink but uh, I won't do it in my session because the the rectangle will stay on the <laughs> on the screen indefinitely probably or I'm not sure how to uh, remove it so I won't do it because I don't like uh, random rectangles on my screen uh, yeah and that's really useful because it show you that you have uh, the right right item you are looking for so, uh, if you want to play on the virtual machine, which mostly you want, because for example you don't have the right version of Fedora you, are want, you want to write tests for, like you want to write tests for Fedora 28, you already have raw height as it should be, then uh, you can install just to the virtual machine, uh, use SSH to connect to it, and from the root session you can use this uh, this command to run a user session and to be connected to it and so you can use uh, the Python or IPython stuff even in uh, SSH session which is really useful because for example you can you can play with it. You don't have to care about rectangles on your screen and uh, everything. And when you end the session, it will just end the session. <laughs> so yeah, it's good for playing with it and you can do there everything and don't have to care about your own session. So two main functions I use in IPython or two things I import is root for getting the uh, root of application and some raw input uh, like press key which is function which just press key down or up or enter so it's useful and also there is a there's a function click and so so you can look in the docktail it's it's uh, quite nice to look on the code <laughs> So, as I said, you can run it locally as I did right now. You can run it on VM and also on bare metal and use SSH. 
to connect to it, you can play with Doctail uh, with IPython, or you can just run test with Behave. Uh, in the GNOME calculator, you can find there, for example, if you will, mm, if you will download download the code from the Pegir or how is it pronounced then you will find there the runtest.sh which looks like this which will when you run it it will download the submodel which is f mm, for downloading the common steps from another git repo so it will include all those common steps into your project uh, it will remove all the videos because there's <laughs> if you uh, um, record the sessions it's th this will get full of those uh, and then it run the behave in again in test session that's it's done by this function this docktail uh, run headless next uh, create session when we run it with sudo and some user it will run it as this user so it will be user session uh, so it will look like your normal session you are using as a user and you can then put there some function you want to run uh, when I show uh, would when I was uh, showing you this before, I, there was a bash, which is the way how you what you want to run when you use SSH because you want to play with mm, with it. But if you run directly behave, it will uh, run tests those behave tests. It's done like this: uh, behave minus uh, dash t uh, it says that you want to run a uh, test which is with and there is a parameter uh, if I look in the test all those scenarios have defined tags so if you want uh, just run this scenario you will put there dash t advanced calculation and it will run this particular scenario you can also run uh, a whole feature because the feature was tagged with that and you can also put the same tag to more scenarios so uh, you can use tags to run different uh, for example if you would have tests for different tiers then you could uh, run it like this you could tag it with tier 1 tag and run all those tier 1 tags uh, tier tier 1 tests okay what's the time okay i should end in 5 minutes i guess yeah, okay that's right because i'm on the end uh right now i'm trying to write some osci we i will probably won't get it to it right now Okay, it's a good way to run those tests if you want don't want to set anything because normally you have to install docktail behave and everything set up but with that it could be used on the cloud base image which you can download you have to enlarge the the partition because it's too small it's default by default 4 gigs so you have to make it uh, at least eight to run those tests and then you will just uh, use uh, you will use standard test interface to run the machine for you with that image and I have written the OSCI uh, OSCI like wrapper for it uh, and YAML. Oh, yeah, I would have to find it in here. Upstream first. Okay. Uh, 
that's the next stuff uh, we want to do like uh, when we upstream the tests to run it in OSCI but it's on the go because uh, there is some problems with desktop application being run there and but it's like running this YAML with Ansible playbook uh, with test subject set on the QCOW image you want to run it on and it will do everything if you will have the right OSCI image uh, OS YAML set <laughs> and this one just set the image to have everything installed like workstation to have test user for uh, user session uh, it will install required packages download git and run tests and that's everything you need to do uh, normally I run it like uh, I run virtual machine uh, then SSH to that virtual machine download from git or rsync from my local computer or my uh, host I will mm, co copy the tests and run it with uh, run.sh uh, run test just sh and see results so that's how I run it and you can try it too so that was if I had some slides if I would uh, like run through it in 10 minutes and it didn't happen so <laughs> it's Fedora QA so if you are interested in testing you can also look on other stuff like open QA and just ask guys in Fedora QA team how can you help with testing Fedora and if you have some questions and uh, don't want to talk to me directly because I don't know I smell for example or something like that in the weather it's not <laughs> it's not uh, uh, yeah it happens <laughs> So you can reach me on the mail uh, pashindl at redhead.com or uh, if you are in Brno you can <laughs> come to my office or just find me on Fedora IRC like pashindl or yeah that's that's it probably just find me <laughs> and ask me to whatever you want. If you have questions now, I can probably give you some time in order of seconds to <laughs> to answer. But if you're not, I thank you for your attention and have a nice day and evening playing games or what's... Uh -huh. Uh, I'm not really sure. I haven't done stuff like that because it's uh, I'm quite shortly in the team. But I know that the graphic cards are tested on hardware. Uh, not sure how. There's there are probably tests run in behave, uh, which test if everything looks okay. Wi-Fi is tested probably with m network manager, which was one of uh, nice stuff because the developer of uh, network manager tests just uh, upstreamed his tests and use OSCI already so you can look on network manager tests there uh, it's on github network manager network manager CI so yeah uh, I think that they just have a machine stuffed with a uh, lot of Wi-Fi and network cards and run tests on them I think that this is what's run there uh, I'm not sure with graphic cards but maybe we do manual testing also so I think that uh, it's part of manual testing also probably there are some automated tests but yeah not sure I'm not sure sorry <laughs> but if you will ask me when I will be in office I can direct you to the right person who will answer your questions happily.
I will make him happily answer questions. Cool. Another question? So in .fail you can make sure that things are rendered correctly. Like if the button is like in some other row or something or it's wrong. That's what I'm not sure about. Uh, you can do it with OpenQA, but we don't use OpenQA. <laughs> <laughs> but Docktail doesn't do that. You can write step to do it. Uh, one member of our team written open CV tests. So you can like give it a picture how it should look like and it would make a screenshot or something but still it could be it's a f it's a step in Doctail. Uh, a step for behave written not with Doctail, this one, just in Python. Python OC. This is just an image from Python. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what OpenQA is. It just compares pictures. So you can make it work like the, this with behave. You just write the correct step, which says check if the button is on the right place or it looks l like it should. But I'm not sure if it will discover some hardware issues, probably not. So, not, not sure. I'm really not sure how this is done. Because my work is in uh, testing of the application, not the hardware. So, I so far didn't care about the hardware tests. So, I don't know. So, doesn't work on VLAN. Can you just show the demo are you planning to switch to some other framework or like waiting for the developers to work? Uh, because I can see that the uh, developer of Docker is not that much active. Excuse me, I'm probably deaf. Uh, Docker doesn't work on VLAN, right? Are you planning to switch to some other framework or like uh, waiting for the developers to fix the issue? That's to be decided probably and it's on our manager not on us because like we also plan to use the doctor but the yeah, it's problem it's a real problem it's blocker for us and we are working on making someone to solve it but if it won't happen and it will be a real problem to run it on xorg because for example xorg will disappear then yeah it will be a bad I think that there is a al already written uh, Python 3 Doctail and behave not sure. I haven't tried it, yes. <laughs> and it should be really rewritten, but I think that Doctail is written for Python 3. I think that I use it already, but uh, the behave probably isn't right now. And that's something I'm not sure. And because of changing of default of Python or in 29, yeah, that will be the issue probably too. But uh, behave, Python behave is someone else package probably. <coughs> so yeah, and that, that's a good question for us to ask the developer. Yeah. So. The weather is uh, getting better. <laughs> is it raining? Yes. Yeah, 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 some storm is coming. <laughs> okay, so, any other questions? So, thank you for having me.